Hello everyone and welcome to Volumetrics in Blender. Um, they are everywhere, so let's have a look and let's see what they do and how we can work with them in Blender. So volumes are basically things that occupy space in 3D, right? For example, this cube here. Um, we have a little squared face with another squared face with another squared face and all these faces together, they form a space in 3D with a volume inside of this cube. Right, so when we open up a shader tab, we drag this to the left, we have got a material output that has three outputs for every single render engine, right? When we're gonna be EV or cycles, of course, EV and cycles. And they are all the same, right? We got a surface, a volume, and a displacement. So the surface is something you use to shade the faces of your object, right? The squared faces of the cube, for example. And the volume is something we use to shade the inside of our object, right? The space within. So that is something that we're gonna take a look at today. So I'm gonna stick to cycles and GPU, and I'm gonna go to render view, by the way, and hit shift A, and just add a sunlight to start this off. And let's rotate this nicely so we have some beautiful light in our scene and we can just delete this point light there we go so now we have one source of light in our scene that we can use to just visualize some stuff so when we select our cube and we go to the shader editor and we hit shift a and search for a volume there's a few different things we can add All right so we got a scatter principled volume and the volume absorption and the volume info as well now the volume info is something you can use when you are for example using a smoke simulation right so then your simulation will already have some um, uh, some information that you can use and access and for example shade your volume with now the other ones right so let me just add them all we got a scatter we got a principled volume and we got a volume absorption right so we got three nodes right here that basically make up your volume shading right now these two here the volume absorption and the volume scatter are the easiest ones they are the ones that are most primitive right and have the least amount of customization options and we have the principle the volume next to that right and it's basically allowing us to do the same thing as these two but it has more control more inputs and we can for example even access some emission right for example when we're working with flames and smoke right a fire plus smoke simulation we have for example got emission as well because flames emit light right and if we have a volume absorption it basically means that when light enters our volume right this direction for example our volume absorbs light the more it travels through it right so at the first point our light is not really absorbed yet by the volume but the farther this travels along our light path the more it gets absorbed and the way to visualize that is with for example let me add a quick suzanne to my scene oh there is it there we go suzanne let me just subdivide this real quick two times there we go shade this smooth and let's hit new material and let's try out that principled or not a principled volume but a volume absorption there we go and let's crank that into the volume because we are working with a volume right you can see that we're actually losing some light when we travel inside of our suzanne right so at the start of the edges of our object, you can barely see it doing anything because by that distance, it hasn't really traveled that far. But the more it goes to the core of our object, the more it is really getting absorbed. And the higher we put this density, the more light is getting absorbed on the inside of our Suzanne, right? And for example, a nice use case for this will be in combination with a glass surface, right? So hit Shift A, find the glass BSDF and crank that into surface. And now we're combining glass with the depth of glass, right? So basically the volume now shows us how thick this glass is, right? So the more glass you have on the inside, right? The more thick your glass is going to be, um, the more light you're going to lose a little bit as well. 
okay because glass is rarely completely glossy as well so there's always some light that could diffuse in your object and be lost somewhere basically all right so absorption is just something that happens so we have got our color input as well so we can make this red for example and it will make us look like we have thicker glass right so that is a beautiful start now if we change this to the volume scatter it's going to do something completely different all right i may not really look like that but what a volume scatter does is basically scatter light around right and you can visualize that in the following way so when light travels right into a volume that scatters light let's say we have a light path right here that travels into our volume with a volume scatter there is a chance that our light is getting scattered instead of just following its original direction and the reason why that happens is because a volume is usually made up out of particles right and in the air that could be what's in the air well we got co2 we got o2 we got nitrogen um those are all particles right and these things can actually scatter around your light and when that happens let's say there's a particle here right there and our light hits that particle it has a chance to scatter around right so basically that means that it could be bouncing in a different direction than it was traveling right and how this is scattered basically depends on what particle it will be how close they are together right the density and properties like those so that's basically how scattering works right if there's a particle in the way there's a chance that our light is being scattered in a different direction and now we got a value right here that says the anisot well, let me uh, crank this out a little bit anisotropy i probably say that wrong but you can read it right here <laughs> and what it does is define how the light is scattered right a value of zero means it can scatter basically everywhere right all directions but if we crank this more to one our light is scattering more in the direction of the light path itself right which means basically that if we have a anisotropy of one our light is basically going to scatter more into the direction of the light right instead of being scattered backwards as well and if we set this to minus one our light is being scattered more into the reverse direction the backwards direction right so all these things you can try and use and tweak to get the results that you're looking for right and you can visualize this quite nicely by for example uh, let me just delete this real quick by adding for example a cube shift a mesh cube and i'm going to hit new material and let's just start off with a volume scatter once again crank it into your volume and there we go let's set the density a little bit lower and i'm going to change my sunlight to be let's say an area light and move that closer and this is basically going to allow us to visualize our light through our object right so if we crank up at this a power there we go and let's just crank down the spread something like that right you can now see our light is passing through a volume all right and this will visualize how our anisotropy for example works right so if i will just add this to right there to the corner and we go to our cube object um, and let's just change the value here now you can see that when we crank this up it changes how our light is passing through right there's not that much scattering going on it seems like and the reason why is because if we crank this up the light is not going to be reflected as much into for example the side direction but more into the front direction which means that less light is actually going to enter for example the camera from the side because it's less likely to scatter into for example a sideways direction because we crank this up more right if we crank this to the zero we have more light that scatters multiple directions and if we crank this to zero we have light that scatters back more so basically same result as in the forward direction 
Now, if we change this light to be a point light, it becomes even more apparent what's happening, right? Because a point light will um, distribute light in all directions, right? But if we then crank this to, let's start this at zero, right? You can see that our light is really being scattered through this volume. And that way we're getting more of that fog, that haze kind of look. But if we crank this up to, let's say, 0.9, you can see that it's scattering less through this volume, right? In less random directions, that means. And that way we're basically seeing the light point as a smaller object in that volume, right? I hope that makes sense. And that's a lot of fun to use, for example, where you don't want your entire scene to be lit up by this volume, but you just want a very thick fog around, for example, a lantern or something like that. All right, so that is the basics of that. Now, the principal volume, principal volume is something that you can use quite nicely as well right because we got a density factor as well we got a the same slider here that does the same thing and we got an absorption value as well so this basically combines everything right and the way to use that um, i usually use this with a smoke simulation or fire and smoke simulation other than that i will usually combine a scatter with an absorption and that's right we can combine volumes with a mixed shader and we can just combine the two Right, and now we have a volume scatter and an absorption combined. And you can just change the, the factor there to make this more absorption or more scattering. Right, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So those were the basics of the volume nodes in Blender, the volume metrics. And so there was a part one. In part two, we will actually visualize this a bit better with light that is actually traveling through a small grill, for example, or in the case of a laser, right? Because a laser is a very directional light passing through a volume as well, right? So that's for part two. If you like this, please leave a like, a comment, subscribe. We will enjoy any one of those and then we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.